So let's take a more detailed look at the idea behind risk scorecarding. So just to refresh your memory, we've taken the strategic objectives and we've determined the likelihood and impact of those risk elements occurring with respect to each one of those strategic objectives. We're now going to replace that analysis with a scorecard. Let's just take a closer look at what's going on here. What we've done is in the first column, the column marked with the letter I, we're taking the impact analysis that we did before and charting that. So in this example, you can see there's an impact of four, and so that's represented with a three-bar icon and so forth. So this is the impact analysis we've already completed. And of course, this on the left are the strategic objectives and weightings that we already completed in the strategy module. These are leading indicators that would give leadership and the organization warning that that particular risk element is occurring with respect to that specific strategic objective. So in this area that's highlighted, we're taking a look at the ERP implementation failure. And we're wondering what its a leading indicator is on its impact on the strategic objective, profitable growth. In this case, we might use something like the customer profitability roll-up that the new ERP system created compared to what the previous system created. Or maybe we're going to take a look at revenue growth projections based on the ER new ERP numbers. So they are indicators about whether that specific risk is related to that specific strategic objective at this point in time. Then the third column actually mathematically calculates and provides a visual representation of the level of risk that that performance indicates might be occurring. In this case, it's just a simple mathematical case of multiplying the strategic objectives weighting times its impact times that leading indicator. So in this case, we'd give uh, uh, a green a score of one a yellow a score of 2, and a red a score of 3. So medium times impact times that score of 3 gives us a bar of that length. Now where this becomes interesting is if we take a look at where we've got two objectives. Both of these objectives have the same impact level of 4. And they have the same red risk indicator which shows whatever the leading indicator is related to ERP implementation and great service and uh, the leading indicator of ERP implementation's impact on continuous improvement, both of those measures, which are obviously different items, are both performing below target and therefore have the red icon. What you'll notice is one of these bars is considerably longer. The reason is we have the score, the strategic priority of high times the impact times that same poor performance. And a high gives us a bigger risk manifesting itself than a low does. So this allows us to begin to visually see the level of risk which may be occurring in the current organization. What we can also do is add up that weighted performance. So in this case, if we just looked at the colored icons, you might say, well, you know what, we've got some reds, we have some greens, maybe it averages out. But what we can do is, based on the weighting, we can calculate the net impact of these more significant impacts on the reds than the greens and come up with an overall score. So we're basically doing the sum of this strategic weighting times impact times performance to give us that overall risk. What this means is when you take a look at the risk scorecard, we can take a look at risks as they're occurring by risk element. So in this example, there's a yellow, that means perhaps caution or pay attention around implementation. But the new product implementation looks like it's green. So we don't need to focus our risk uh, energies and mitigation techniques there at this point in time. So this scorecard, if we look at it, vertically begins to show what risk might be manifesting itself against each risk element. We can also take a look at this horizontally. 
So in this case, if we look at C2, low price, we can begin to see the risks which are associated with that one compared to, say, anticipate customer needs. And that view is not available in most organizations. That ability to see where risk is occurring is an important element of management's ability to understand strategic risk as well as operational risk. What we can also do is see the specific places where risk looks like it's occurring. So in this case, we might want to focus on mitigation techniques specifically around the ERP as it relates to continuous improvement and inventory management, as well as labor uh, problems as it relates to price. So it can give us a more specific area of where we need to focus our risk mitigation activities. Now, we can extend this by any number of risk elements. And what this allows us to do is to add up across all of them to determine the absolute risk, which is kind of the average risk occurring across each of the risk elements. Now, this is interesting because it tells us on average what risk is occurring against that profit growth. But it doesn't tell us the impact of that risk in comparison to the other risks which are occurring. The second thing we can do, it's a bit more complicated to get your head around, but since each of those bar charts represent the strategically weighted impact of that risk, we can actually add those up across all the risk elements to give us a net score of what is the strategically weighted risk that's likely to be occurring with respect to each one of those strategic objectives. Now this becomes important because this provides leadership with an idea of across all the risks based on current performance which parts of strategy are most exposed. And of course this will vary over time based on performance and as we've described before if you were to do scenario planning we could put down other weightings on the left hand side and the net issue of what risks are occurring will tend to vary and this provides leadership with a better navigation tool or scenario planning tool to evaluate the risks as they're occurring. So the risk scorecard provides us with the ability to translate the risk into specific actions and will enable leadership to make decisions which allow it to operate a more strategic way. So as a summary, down the left we have the strategic objectives from the strategy model and their priorities. Across the top, we have the risk elements from the risk register. We're capturing the impact of each risk element's impact on that strategic objective. A leading indicator on whether that risk is beginning to occur based on actual current performance. A graph of represent representation of what that risk level may look like. If we add up down those, we are able to give a likelihood weighted risk level by risk element. And if we add up horizontally, we get a likelihood weighted risk level by strategic objective.